Tommy Karate Patera lived by the book. A book of murder and torture and no remorse. Who was Tommy Karate Pintera? A banana capo killed over 60 people. Pintera was born on December 2, 1954. When he was a kid, he was a victim to being bullied. And it is this made Pintera into the mean and sadistic person he became as an adult. Pintera grew up in Brooklyn. And Pintera grew up as a shy kid and he was often bullied and beaten. In junior high, he started watching martial art movies and he soon asked his parents to put him in karate classes. He studied karate similar to how a monk studies the craft. His confidence soon grew and he no longer was the shy, timid kid in the school. Pintera always ad admired the mobsters who hang out in the local social clubs. In the social clubs located around Gravesend, he admired the respect they commanded and the world. In 1964, he entered the karate tournament. He faced seven opponents and destroyed each one. He won a year-long scholarship to study karate in Japan. Thomas Pintera returned to New York City in 1976. He was built a rock solid with muscle. He was very disciplined and he was no one to be messed with. Pintera started to hang out at local bars in Gravesend often being around local mobsters. Tommy met Anthony Bruno in Delegato at one of these bars. In Delegato was big into the drug business for the banana crime family. Pintera started working with in Delegato dealing and delivering drugs. He often brings in drugs from Canada into the US. He also became a juice collector for the banana family. He made a name for himself in the family by roughing up drug deadbeats and people who owned money to the family. He used the skills he learned while growing up, up karate to put a fear into dead beats who owned money. He earned the nickname Tommy Karate. Bruno Indelicato was the contract hitman for the Bernardo family. He eventually started learning the craft. He studied how, how to murder, dissect and cut and mutilate bodies. Pintera studied up on series called How to Kill and Show Out and many different ways to kill and get rid of a body. At 24 years old, Pintera made his bones. He wanted to move up in the family. He was given the contract to kill Pin Pintera received an envelope with the name, photo and location of the person. Pintera tracked the mark to a street in Brooklyn. He walked up on him and shot him. Soon after the hit, he was introduced to Anthony Sparrow, a high-ranking capo in the Bonanno family. Spiro nominated Pintero into the family and soon after he became a made member of the Banana Crime family. He was given a crew of drug dealers and started making more money for the family. Thomas Salerno was a drug dealer who was often late on his payments to the family. Pintero decided it was time for him to go. He parked the car in Crescent near the cemetery to show his crew and drug dealers that he was not one to play with. In the early 1980s, he was a high earner for the Banana family and a hitman. Pintera married and had a kid and soon divorced. They divorced and he met a Brooklyn lady named Celeste. They were the perfect couple. The only problem, Celeste was a drug addict. Pintera hated her for being addicted to drugs because as a dealer he knew that drugs did to people. He and went intimidated all of the local drug dealers and warned them to stay away from Celeste and don't sell her any drugs. That didn't work. Celeste had a friend, Phyllis, who had got the drugs for her and they often partied and got high together. But Tara told them to stop hanging out and they did around him. Behind his back, Celeste and Phyllis still hang out. The Tara would shoot someone, take the body into the bathtub and let the blood drain out. Dismember the body stuff them in suitcases and take him out of his personal gravesite in Staten Island. The Davis Wildlife Refuge, because it was a wildlife refuge protected by the federal government, meaning there will never be any construction on the area. Pintera stayed with the Banana family rules, getting rid of bodies, dead beats and rats were often taken out. During the 1980s, Pintera tried to get Celeste off drugs, and she often relapsed. On September 10, 1987, Celeste and Phyllis became party in a Brooklyn bar and went to back to Phyllis' apartment. Celeste shut up a heroin to fall asleep. 
Celesta never woke up, and Terra was informed of Celesta's death by one of his closest friends, Frank Ganji. When Terra blamed Phyllis, early soon, Ganji met up with Phyllis at the bar. They partied, did drugs and sex. September 30, 1980, Ganji took Phyllis back to his apartment for two days. They partied. Ganji soon tells Pantera that he had Phyllis in his apartment. Pantera comes and kills Phyllis. Surfer is head, dismember the body stuff into all suitcases, and his crew buried the remains in a personal cemetery. Pantera kept the head in the freezer. Ganji soon started to have doubts about the life in the mob. Ganji was pulled over and arrested for drunk driving. While in jail, he started talking to a detective he knew. He became an informant and gave up Thomas Pantera, March 15, 1989. Pantera heard a rumor that the two members in his family were informants. Pantera soon murdered the members, Richie Loon and Saul Stern. While Ganji was in jail, he began to invention the atrocities that Pantera would do to anyone he felt betrayed by. Ganji became an informant. Pantera is the police that committed over 60 murders. June 3, 1990, Pantera was arrested and on the 4th he was charged with 7 murders and running a drug dealing crew. Pantera is substantially sentenced to life in prison based on the testimony provided by Ganji. <laughs>